Is in an organisation, they often find straight away a barrier because somebody in a room will say to them, oh, I don't like it, it won't work for me. Without really thinking, does this work for a group of customers somewhere? Have we thought about the customer? Have we thought what those, that group of customers who isn't me, <coughs> so that's the note of caution and reason for doing that exercise. So it was pleasing to say that you did actually go through the thought process. I think often what um, a lot of programs suggest, innovative programs suggest, is you go straight to this, you know, the, the solution and then once you really decide you like the solution, then work back on the negatives. It's very easy if you go, let's work through all the problems you can never deliver anything because it's, it's destroyed or the scope of it's changed by the time you end up delivering something. It's nothing like what you intended. Okay, so I'll just share with you next a um, very quick whistle-stop tour. Um, you'll just have to take my word for it because I'm not going to um, evidence all of this. Um, but at Aviva, we spend a huge amount of money um, talking to customers all of the time uh, to try and find out what on earth it is that they believe, want, choose, etc. Um, and I just wanted to share this with you. To, I think some of it hopefully will resonate with you uh, because um, um, customers' um, needs, wants, I think, uh, actually often stay the same, whatever marketplace you're in. So, first one, this has to be um, un underpin some of our strategy as well now. So, keep it simple, black and white, just keep it simple. Um, pe people are feeling time poor at the moment, they want, um, they don't want complexity, they want organisations to help them strip this out of their lives. Everybody wants to be treated like an individual, not as a number, not as a, a case. They want to be treated as an individual. They want to be able to personalise what they're getting. They want to be able to <coughs> almost design, in some cases, the product to suit exactly what they want, not what the company has provided them with. Um, and so you see this more and more when those companies that allow um, customisation or complete Smoking often appeal to um, customers, uh, but it doesn't have to be that far. It can be just that you that there's more choices within um, a product that you're offering, just to allow the customer to feel that they're in control. Um, <clears throat> so, community. Um, I think this has always existed. This trait in humans, this need to connect, this need to feel part of something. And um, obviously at the moment with the um, explosion in social media, um, the nature of it has perhaps changed in the way that people can connect and find peers who they could never connect with before. The, the, um, the opportunities are endless now to find like-minded people, uh, which can be good and bad, but that's what people are looking for. Um, and so if you can help that um, happen for, for your customers, then that be very powerful. Um, and then we're finding this particularly in the um, in our industry, financial services, um, customers, there's been a massive change, first of all, you may, you may or may not be aware of this in financial services, where um, there's something called the retail distribution review. Um, a lot of products used to be sold and sold as um, by advisors um, to, to their clients. Um, so they, they selected products from a range of different providers, advised their clients what to take, and that's what they took. Um, now, many customers resent that process, um, but just didn't really know how to undertake it themselves. It's actually difficult, perhaps, to get into. Into, into the right um, arena to do that itself. But there is a desire out there that we're noticing that people want 
to be able to self-serve or at least understand better what they're about to do they may then choose whether they're going to take advice so again technology is enabling this through um, explosion in um, websites which is heading in this direction guiding people david's word in our industry if we're very nervous about it um, but nonetheless this is a customer desire people like to be in control of what they're doing they don't like it when they feel out of control so that's where we're heading and that's some of the underlying factors that we're we continue on an everyday basis now. Because we've had quite a debate internally about, well, is that genuinely innovative or not? And so um, that is why I'm asking the question, because I think, actually, you might recognize the debate between new versus improved. And this is something I didn't know. So um, actually, around the world, the definition um, changes. Um, and, and the belief of what is innovative changes. So, um, some people think it's improved, I think we touched on that in the room, that it's actually, you've improved something or changed something that was already there, and other people would say, no, it's new. But that's really important for us in Aviva, that's actually really important because um, different markets that we operate in will have a different take on innovation, which I didn't even think about until I saw some of this, this uh, study that came out. Um, recently. So, you've got to pay attention to that when you're thinking about your innovation programs. My final, uh, I think it's my final-ish thought on um, innovation is just who are we competing against when we're um, considering our own innovation programs, our own, own organisation. Um, and actually we're competing against everyone and everything I think. Innovation. Because once a customer's seen something from a provider, either in your market or elsewhere, that builds an expectation that that is possible and that's what they're looking for. So when people talk about examples of organisations, some of the classic ones come out like Apple's always mentioned, Amazon's always mentioned, if you do a quick scroll or in any room like this, those examples come out about innovative organisations, whether you agree or not, they are mentioned by um, customers because they like the experience that they're getting from those organisations. It's matched their need in a way that they really like. So you're competing, unfortunately, against a broader market than the immediate competitors, I would argue. So once they've seen it, they want it. So once you've had the good burger, <laughs> You don't want the rubbish one, you see what I mean? You just, you expect it. It's no longer good enough to provide the old service. So, to conclude what we're looking for, um, that's my definition of it really. I think it captures both. It's not only new, but it's, it's um, actually serving those existing needs. I think I mentioned that earlier. The existing needs of people generally stay the same. It's just the way that they expect to be served is important. Okay, so I mentioned I'd tell you about the customer cup, so I'll tell you about the customer cup. So, um, this plane is actually our current way of our identifying object. Um, it's designed to um, really express what, where we think ideas start, which is a doodle on a bit of paper, a scribbled note to yourself. Um, and what we, what we did was we took that concept and said actually to our people, why don't you just take that spark, that thought, and throw it out using the Wazoku platform, throw that idea out there, let's just see how far it could go. So we built a whole um, promotional um, campaign, activity, um, community internal communications to our people, really just to um, engage them in a slightly different way. They've been used to seeing pictures of a shiny cup. Um, they've been used to um, some off-brand. This is where my marketing head came in. They were our old campaigns and promotions. Well, were off-brand, so I couldn't bear it. I had to bring it, the yellow a bit more in and, <laughs> and, and, and put it back on brand internally, which is important that we match the two. So um, I took over this program in. 
December last year. Um, and so that was one of the changes I needed to make. I needed to change the way that we promoted it to keep the engagement levels up um, and make sure that people have the best opportunity to, to get involved. We're working about uh, 18 markets around the world. Um, and previously, I think it was true to say that the customer cup um, had been dominated by, um, by the UK and we needed a greater engagement around other markets that we operated in. So um, that was one of the reasons I changed the way that we promoted it. So what is the programme? The programme is basically um, an idea generation programme, but in a tournament. So we make it competitive. We actually gather ideas from uh, anyone can enter. There's no barrier to entry whatsoever. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, anyone can enter across the companies. That's about 30 odd thousand staff can enter this um, from anywhere in the world. But what we tell them is, is that um, it's a competition. So the best ideas will go through it. And we have a number of stages, like any tournament. So we've just we have a first round, what we call semi-finals, and then a grand final. And at each of those points, we judge the ideas and decide what's going to go forward. So um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment, but that is the structure of this competition. I think it's true to say that in the past, or how this started was actually very much about recognising people in our company and really giving them the opportunity to celebrate that. So, um, the grand final at the end of this um, used to be um, one of the most significant events in these people's working lives. Uh, don't just take my word for it, then. this is kind of the, the commentary that came back from previous tournaments. Um, it, 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 in some ways it was arduous, because when they get to the grand final they need to present their idea to um, our board directors. And so these are the most senior people in our company, and as you can imagine, uh, fix them with the death stare and say, give me, give me some reason to believe in your idea. Um, and so um, it's quite daunting for that person who has previously, potentially, only ever um, <clears throat> been in the background working in an IT department or has been customer facing, but never been asked to present to this level of uh, person in the company. But they're treated like VIPs, it's a three day event and normally it's somewhere quite fantastic um, in terms of location. So people loved it, and I've always loved it, but I had to change it. <laughs> <laughs> because um, um, people um, challenge the budget, so we've had a smaller budget to work on, there's less people running it, it's just me. Um, used to be four people, so the usual process um, in every company is to keep looking for efficiency, isn't it? And so um, that's why um, I say I needed to change some things. But the concept of the competition continues, and we and we are still having the grand final, just with a slightly small budget. But they will never notice. I will. So one of the differences this time round is that we've asked the first round to be judged by the CEO um, of their market. So up to that point, they haven't had a huge amount of support. But if the CEO likes it or thinks there's some legs in it, um, and we gave guidance on how they should be assessing the ideas, and making sure they sort of things back to our strategy, um, just in the way that they presented the idea, um, how collaborative they've been on the idea, things like that. Um, so we asked our CEOs to judge it. So what, in terms of support, we've told the CEOs, if you put an idea, idea through to the next round, you're in effect sponsoring it. Because they have seen it, the difference this time around is that the, the senior person in the market that those people work in know about it. In the past, often the customer cup ideas could be going on, going on, and those senior people who might be needing to give them some help in terms of resource or deliver it in their market, if it's liked at the grand final, suddenly found themselves with potentially a problem because they just haven't geared themselves up for that activity. So um, it's important that the CEOs are involved, I think, and are now aware that something's happening in their market. Um, whether they um, 
actually seek that or sought that um, in the first round. Um, I think it was, it was again, it was mixed. Um, it was there available, it's open, again, it was open platform, and it's open for everybody to see. Anyone can see any idea at any time, they can search out ideas. Um, how many people did that, I'm not so sure, but it was possible. And one of the things that we certainly wanted to do this time around was to make sure that it was as open as possible. In the past, I think that it was possible for a team to get involved in a custom cup idea, build on it, get totally engrossed in it, get to the grand final. People literally two desks away from them would have no idea because it was all sorts of hidden. It wasn't open, it wasn't accessible to anyone who wanted to look at it in the company. So that was something we wanted to make sure was, was possible. And the legacy of all of this will be that the ideas will remain open and there for everyone to see if they want to.